Good morning. Good morning, Father. Let us all stand. Happy Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Thank you. And then you have to just respond, Que viva. Que viva la Virgen de Guadalupe. Que viva. Que viva the Virgen de Guadalupe. Que viva. Que viva Cristo Rey. Que viva. Now that you are awake, let's now take a moment to smile and take, acknowledge each other's presence as we turn to the people around us. Welcome each other. Now take a moment to quietly acknowledge our loving God who celebrates with us this morning. And to Him we lift up all our prayers and intentions and one another, praying most specially for people in dire and destitute situations, remembering the victims of the tornado in the different states in our country for their families and families who struggle, for those who dedicate their lives in serving the poor and needy, those in the front lines, the first responders. Today, we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, which is Gaudete Sunday, and it happens also to be the feast day of the patroness of the Americas in our diocese, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Please make sure you silence your cell phones so that we may have a meaningful and reverential worship. Let's now sing our entrance song. the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit, Father. As we gather in this celebration, few days before the coming of our Lord's incarnation on Christmas, and on this joyful Sunday, our hearts rejoice, for we are the constant recipient 
of the mercy and compassion of God. And so to him, we bring our faults, our sins, our mistakes to be forgiven and to be strengthened by his grace. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, do not be discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great and holy
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near, have no anxiety at all. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. 
I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of my favorite stories and the stories I tell myself at times. A father was training his baby or child to walk and he would set him a little bit distance and he would go a little bit distance from him in the park and he would stand him up steady and he would walk backwards and the child would take one step and fall down. So he'd start all over again and this happened several times. But one time, as he stood and steadied the, the child up, he walked he, backwards, and the child was able to make five steps towards him. And he looked around, and he saw the guy was sitting in the park bench watching them, and said, did you see that? He took five steps. And the guy said, big deal. I saw him fall seven times. <laughs> and then the father said, no, it, that doesn't matter. What matters was he rose up and walked towards me. I often tell this myself because there are times and moments when I feel that I do not constantly walk consistently towards God and I find myself sometimes also needing to ask and beg for his forgiveness. And during these times, during these moments, sometimes I tell myself, will I, when will I ever learn, Right? Isn't that what we tell ourselves sometimes when we examine ourselves for confession and sometimes we say, why will I go to confession if it's the same sin I tell over and over again? But to God, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times we fall. It doesn't matter even we are indifferent to Him. It doesn't matter even if we say and even proclaim to Him, I don't love you. Or some people even say, I hate you. In the end, God always answers, but you know, I love you now and forever. And God even can say, I love you before, now, and forever. And that is why there is this, there's joy this day. When we are reminded of that joy, of what is forthcoming, of what is already here and now, and what we look forward to, what we try to remember and celebrate, that the Lord is coming. And the Lord will sustain us. And the Lord reminds us of that love. Two of the readings, the first and second reading today, were written in a time of desperation. Ze Zephaniah wrote his prophecy when, at 700 years before the coming of our Lord Jesus when the Assyrians were the most dominant power in the world and they were a very violent and a warlike people that they, Israel suffered. And yet he said, and he said to remind it, the Lord shall remove the judgment. And the Lord shall be with you always. The Lord is in your midst. St. Paul wrote his letter to the Philippians when he was in prison. And he was always at the point where he can be executed. And yet he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And I say again, as if to emphasize, rejoice. It's like, be joyful. And if you did not hear me, the first time I'm telling you, be joyful. So every day, we should have a reason to smile and be happy and be joyful, even at the very instant and start of the day. Sometimes we are so burdened by certain things, and a priest once wrote five reasons why we may not have that joy or happiness in our hearts. First, he said, sometimes we wallow in self-pity. We feel sorry for ourselves. We can no longer drive tough luck. We can no longer do the very things that we can do before. I remember when I, uh, when I celebrated my golden year of life here on earth, 
I just realized that I cannot go up the steps that quickly as before. <laughs> and I realized when I wake up in the morning, there are sounds from my body that I don't, didn't hear before. <laughs> but when? Shall I wallow in self-pity or shall simply I say, I will embrace this? So every morning, I wait for that sound. And then I said, I'm awake. <laughs> there are constantly... Sometimes we don't feel joy because we constantly put other people down to make ourselves feel good, right? We base our happiness on the unhappiness of another. We always look for the mistakes. We become so overly critical. And the, the criticism is not constructive, but for own, our personal pleasure. But that pleasure doesn't last. The other thing that could probably be a reason is putting ourselves down. When we make mistakes, sometimes we can never forgive ourselves. Oftentimes, in the sacrament of reconciliation, one of the things I always say, forgiveness should come in a full circle that not only God forgives us, we have to forgive ourselves. Because I remember one time this person would say, Father, I keep saying this over and over again. And I tell him, maybe because you have not forgiven yourself. You have not embraced that self that God has already embraced and forgiven and cleansed. Sometimes we are harder on ourselves than God. Then, like I said, we use that very same judgment towards others. The other thing that will really make us unhappy is that when we keep resentment and anger in our hearts. I remember when I was a little kid and I would throw a tantrum my mother would bring out her mirror, the mirror she uses to retouch herself, you know, with lipstick and everything after a meal. She'd put the mirror in my face, look at yourself, <laughs> when I would throw a tantrum. And I would look at my face and I, and I see my contorted face and I would smile. And mom said, you smiled, you smiled. And I have no reason anymore to cry. The other thing is that when we fear and worry about things that might happen, let's cross the bridge when we get there. Sometimes we, our fears and our worries paralyze us. And then we remember how in the gospel, how in script, sacred scriptures, the, lo, the word do not fear or do not be afraid or I am here has been repeated 365 times and some said 366 to cover maybe for the leap year. And that God is always there. Finally, sometimes we feel so sad because we think of a loss that we have in our lives. Job, family, loss of our capacities. But for us who have faith, for us who have hope, for us who have given the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ in his paschal mystery of his passion, death, and resurrection, those among us, our loved ones who have died, are never lost. They are not lost because they are with God. And if we are with God, then they are with us. Like if we come into the celebration of the Eucharist, which is the highest form of prayer, which is a foretaste of what the banquet that awaits us, then our loved ones who are departed are with us. When my mother died, one of the things that I thought about is, Especially now, during holidays and Christmas seasons, I would always say, oh, my mother would have loved this. But I'm saying, what am I saying? She's seeing what I'm seeing. She's hearing what I'm hearing. She's witnessing what I am witnessing. She may not be here physically, but if I open myself to the faith and hope that God gives me, then she is here with me forever until that day when we shall be reunited and what a joyful reunion that will be. Because when we have joy in our hearts, when we are able to be moved to do good and share this joy with others, then we're able to smile, and then we're able to simply go out of our way and realize that there may be some people who need to have that light in their lives. In the, before, in the advent of electricity, there was a town which has a town lighter, you know, the guy who lights the posts. 
If you see this, before they don't have electric posts, so they have gas lamps. And there was this guy who consistently, every day, would light the lamps, especially during Chris, Chris, winter season when it is dark. They would watch as the street starts to brighten. Kids who are playing would be excited because they could continue playing as they saw the light spread. But then electricity came, and the guy lost his job, but he was also of getting mature in age. And when they would come and visit him, they never realized that this person was blind. But he was consistent in lighting the gas lamp post all throughout his life. So the person who could not even see the light was giving light to others. One of the secrets, perhaps, that our first two reading reminds us of how we can have joy in our hearts is one truth that stands for all eternity, that God loves you and I. I'd like us to do a little exercise. Put your hand to your heart. You know where your heart is, right? It's not here. Okay, it's here. Close your eyes and believe these words and say these words, God loves, God loves me. And now say it with a smile. God loves me. And because God loves you, he gave us the perfect gift of all, a mother whom we celebrate and honor today, a mother who in her apparition hundreds of years ago said, am I not your mother too? And let's thank the Lord for the gift of a mother in Mary. Hopefully, it is not our jobs, it is not what we have, it is not the things that we possess that make us happy, but it is how we live our lives that truly makes us a disciple of our Lord. Let us pray as we continue our celebration, that as we hold our hands in our hearts, we may always tell ourselves at the beginning, at least at the beginning and at the end of the day, that God loves us. And we may add, Mother Mary loves us. And we have these two people, and even St. Joseph, whose year we have just ended last December 8th, is there in our lives. Then what more do we need? And let's make now this prayer to our loving God. In Him alone is our hope. In Him alone is our strength. In Him alone are we justified. In Him alone are we saved. What have we to offer that does not fade nor wither? Can the world ever satisfy the emptiness of our hearts? In vain we deny. When will you cease running in search of hollow meaning? Let his love fill the hunger in your soul till it overflows with joy. You yearn to know in him alone is our hope. In him alone is our strength. In him alone are we justified. In him alone are we saved. Please repeat after me. God loves me. God loves me. Mama Mary loves me. me. St. Joseph loves me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Let us now all stand. 
as together we profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people called to rejoice in these days of preparation, we ask divine assistance to live as the people of God. For the church, that in the face of hardships and persecution, there may still be rejoicing. Let us pl pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continued intercession of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that the peoples of the Americas will see and imitate God's saving love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have forgotten the gifts of their baptism, that they may turn again to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from depression or loneliness, that they may experience the joy of life in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold in our hearts, for our families and our loved ones. We pray for the intentions for whom this Mass is offered, for the eternal repose of the souls of Piedad Gutierrez, Socorro Garcia, Andrea, and Martin Ochoa. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions that have been submitted to us, we pray for those who are in need of God's strength and comfort and healing for Drew Cetric, Hilda Sanchez, Wilfredo Montoya, Azucena Mata, Erlinda Cano, Benjamin Madarang, Red David Erlinda, and Omar Kapati. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our dearly departed Lydia and son, Manuel Grajera, Gladys Mina, Ana Socorro Laxa, Ambrosio Trinidad, Joe Parco, Miguel Mesa, Celso Lazaro, Rachel Ruelas, Brianna Carcel, Tyler Camerino, and Virginia Nowinski. And for those who perished at the tornado that has just occurred, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we have placed in the Ark of Prayer chest, as well as praying for those who have been tragically affected by the calamities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, as your Holy Spirit came upon Christ, may it now come upon us as we joyfully prepare for the coming of the Son, in whose powerful name we make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for to your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until.
observe for us, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Santiago de Compostela, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, deacons, religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with the many in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit, Father. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. To our sisters and brothers who are worshiping with us online, and to those among us who are not able to receive our Lord Jesus sacramentally, we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. First, I'd like to extend our gratitude to the parents and all those who are involved in our religious education program, as well as our, to our music ministries and our choir and our choir director for making my dream come true that the RE kids also sing in our Noel night. So thank you to our chorale for the Noel night. You have brought joy to many people on that day that we're able to gather. And now let's take a moment to pray for all those who are experiencing chronic illnesses, mental, emotional, psychological, or physical, and for those whose departed loved ones I were experiencing grief in our hearts, that they may be given that light of joy and hope. Almighty and eternal God, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards your sons and daughters who are ill and free them from all illnesses, comfort them, and restore them to health. Merciful God, your son wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Walk with those who are grieving a departed loved one. Hear your people who cry out to in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In all this we bring to our loving mother we have in Mary, especially Our Lady of Guadalupe. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And to Saint Joseph, hail guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted this only Son, in you Mary place her trust. With you, Christ, was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us to the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, Father. And before I give the final blessing, place your hand again on your heart and say, God loves me. God loves me. And Almighty God, who loves you, bless you and your loved ones, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all. Take it all, my life in your hands. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all, take it all.